Let's talk about thermal energy concepts. I put this dumb joker here, unnecessary life vest, ice cubes float. <laughs> That's because it's Ice Cube, who's a music artist from a long time ago. Probably you don't know, but it's okay. So uh, we'll talk about molecular theory and what makes a solid a solid. So we characterize a solid by something that has a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Whereas a liquid will have no fixed shape, but it does have a fixed volume. And a gas has neither that's fixed. Now, maybe it helps to see these visually. Uh, so let's actually go over those and take a look here. It's my old uh, favorite website here, P-H-E-T. I love them. But so here we go. This is their states of matter one. Let's look at, we've got, for example, neon here. And if you look, this is solid. This here will be a liquid. And this will be a gas. And notice the difference. Notice they're still vibrating. So notice these solid molecules are still vibrating, you know, uh, with respect to each other. So are the liquid ones, and the gas ones, of course, as well. They're just bouncing around. Now we can do it with uh, H2O, for example. So this would be solid, that would be ice. This would be a liquid, that would be water. And then, of course, this would be gas. This would be like steam. So in these cases right here, I think it really helps to visualize it. So that's what's happening here. These molecules are vibrating relative to each other. So let's talk about temperature now. We have temperature in Kelvin or Celsius. And we use two main scales. We actually don't use Fahrenheit. That's for Americans, sorry. But uh, we actually use Celsius. And Celsius is defined this way. So the zero degrees Celsius is the boil, uh, freezing point of water. And 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. Whereas Kelvin, Kelvin is interesting because it's... Uh, it goes up by the same amount, it's just that it has a zero, different starting point. A zero Kelvin is actually called absolute zero. That's going to be the coldest temperature you can theoretically have. And zero degrees Kelvin corresponds to 273, uh, sorry, zero degrees Celsius corresponds to 273 Kelvin. And luckily you have an equation for this. It's in your data book that you don't have to memorize it. And it uh, tells you how to find the temperature in Kelvin. This is early on in your data book, actually. So it's not uh, in the topic where you think it should be. It's actually near the beginning. But it says temperature in Kelvin is equal to temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. And this, again, you don't have to memorize it. So that's great. Okay, so here's an exam tip, is that uh, the amount that you go up, so in other words, delta T, if you have like a change in temperature, it's actually the same for degrees Celsius and Kelvin. They just have a different zero point. So that means if you've got a question where they're saying put in delta T, you can actually say what the change was in Celsius because it's the same as the change in Kelvin. However, if you're just finding uh, like an actual temperature, like just T, then use Kelvin. That's really important. That's why I put this one here. Did you hear about the guy who froze himself to absolute zero? It's not just he's okay now, he's zero Kelvin now. <laughs> so let's talk about some important definitions. We have a density. And density is given by this symbol rho right here. And luckily in your data book you have this too. It goes density equals mass divided by the volume. This you get on your data book. Now what are the units? Well, mass is in kilograms. Volume is in meters cubed. So that means density, which is this over this, must be kilograms over uh, meters cubed. So in other words, it's kilogram per meter cubed. So that's how we can define this. Now we have temperature. This is a really important definition. You need to know this. This is often asked on exams. So you need to know it's the average kinetic energy of the molecules. And if you think about kinetic energy, remember, it's like, you know, EK equals half mv squared. Whoops, my 2 was not very nice, but I think you understand the idea. So what does this really mean? It means that things that move faster have a higher kinetic energy and therefore are hotter. So that means, if we go back down here, that means hotter equals faster, cooler equals slower. And that's because two materials at the same temperature will have the same kinetic energy, so they'll have the same average speed. So, you know, we're, we're talking about different things here. So if they're hotter, it's faster. If it's cooler, it's slower. If they're at the same temperature, they have the same EK, therefore the same speed. There's a bunch of different versions that they could be asking you on an exam. Now, we also have an equation for this average kinetic energy, and it goes like this. EK right here, and we put this line on top to say average, is equal to 3 halves times K with a subscript B times T. And this KB is actually called the Boltzmann's constant. And remind ourselves, what are the units of kinetic energy? That's in joules. We've got Boltzmann's constant, which you can look up in your data booklet. It's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. And again, that should make sense uh, because temperature is in Kelvin. And if you got this here by itself, you'd have joules divided by T, so you'd have joules per Kelvin. So like all the units should actually make sense.
Now let's take a look at this again and try to reinforce this right here with an animation as well. So this fact that temperature is the average kinetic energy of the molecules and faster equals hotter, slower equals cooler. Let's look at a different PHET one. This one right here, I just uh, put a bunch of uh, molecules or a bunch of uh, atoms of gas here, these particles. And right now we can see the temperature is 300 degrees Kelvin. We have a pressure here, sure. What I'm going to try to do now is make it colder. The idea then is as I make it colder, I want you to look up here, look at the temperature, and also look at the speed of the particles. So take a look here. As I'm making it cooler, what's happening? Do you notice then the temperature is going down? The temperature is nearly at zero Kelvin. And look at the particles, how they're moving. They're moving slower and slower and slower. So this is the whole idea behind this, right, is that as you move slower, there's less temperature. That's because temperature is defined based on the speed. Not exactly equal to it, but that's because it's the kinetic energy. So to see how, hopefully that sort of reinforces it. I think sometimes animations really help to make it make sense. Okay, so now we have the definition of heat, and heat is a transfer of energy between a system and its surroundings. And you need to know this right here, that Q is the letter that we use to denote, or the variable we use to denote heat. And heat, so Q equals heat, it's measured in joules. And things naturally flow from hot to cold. This is a really important piece here to know. Okay. So that's why I put this little joke right here. That's because, I mean, naturally, heat just flows from hot to cold. It doesn't go from cold to hot easily. You have to kind of force it. So naturally, things go from hot to cold. That's why I put this one right here. If you open the window and the air conditioning, uh, with the air conditioning on, the cold air goes out. No! That's because technically it's the hot air that goes out. That means the cold air, or sort of, yeah, hot air can come in. Therefore, cold air will go out. But it's, it's the hot air going in to cold. So that's actually the important thing. So hot air goes to cold air. Now we've got this thing called internal energy, and that's going to be the total sum of intermolecular potential energy. What does that mean? That's the forces between those molecules. In the animations I showed you, that's the force you know, between those molecules that are moving around. But it's the sum of that and the kinetic energy, and that's due to the random motion. So this U is the uh, variable we use to denote that, and we still measure it in joules. So that's still important here. U is the internal energy. We could even uh, write it down like this. We can say, hey, just so you know, you know, U is also equal to, well, it's the kinetic plus the potential energy, I mean, in general. So this is, I think, another way just to try to think about it is, you know, it's the sum of these at least. So that's a rough idea, but this is really the important piece right here, and that's what we need for this topic.